Howdy everybody out here in YouTube land. This is an amateur artist Mark D. Chandler once again from Man Land. In this here video, it's more of a an educational video for myself. Not for you to actually follow. But how do you clean your cold stove? I searched on YouTube and I could not find a video anywhere to actually have to wash and keep it clean and nice so it will last for years especially since uh you know we tend to just you know fold it back up after use and throw it here in the carport yeah well there's a problem with that it gets all dirty and gringy and so for this particular cast iron Wednesday I decided to show you how to clean it or at least how I did it we're working with the Coleman we got the Coleman dual fuel this is the camp stove number 424 yeah uses unleaded gasoline along with the white gas which is nice I like that now we're not gonna get into the arguments about using unleaded gasoline we're not here to do that that's not what this video is about it's about how to clean this here camp stove so let's find out if this technique actually works because there's some pros and cons with it especially when you're using water to wash it out yeah we want to do it the easy way that water can get in them burners but it's no big deal if you know what you're doing but the way that I cleaned it is it gonna hurt the paint I don't know hmm as the crow says I might have just messed up we got a collaboration we got the Bio Classic 6 quart, that Dutch oven deal. Yeah, we're doing it as a fryer right now. And hey, check it out. That right there is the Coleman Dual Fuel. That's right. We cook it with unleaded gasoline. Yeah, this is the Dual Fuel Camp Stove, number 424. Of course, it's by Coleman, as you can see. And you can tell it's dual fuel because of the color of the tank, for sure, of course. And, uh, yeah, nice little combo there. <laughs> uh, hey, we're cooking some chicken strips. Well, bones burning them up and everything, and I'm going to be the official flipper. Uh, we got some chicken strips that have been breaded. We got some french fries going in, and of course, we got some, I think it's farm raised catfish. And that's going to be the last on the menu item, especially be cooking at their earl. Yeah. Howdy everybody out there in YouTube land. This is amateur artist Mark D. Chandler once again from Man Land. In this here video, as you've seen in the title, it is how to actually wash a Coleman 424 dual fuel Coleman stove. I think I already said Coleman, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Now, I'm just an amateur. I'm not an expert in a lot of things, but I do know how to clean a regular house stove. And this is one of the products here that you can use. Now I'm not sponsored by them, but what this is is easy off. This is a degreaser. This is not the actual heavy duty oven cleaner. It's a degreaser. You know, it's a good thing to sit there and clean off your Coleman stove just about every time you use it, especially if you know that you're not going to use it again in the near future. Because what do we all do? We use the stove, we fold it back up, sit it here in the carport, and guess what? It just gets rank and rank and rank. You know, it just happens that way. So, I want to make sure that I keep this dude here as clean as possible. Now, it's not going to prevent, you know, the necessary rust and everything. But let me show you what I did. This is it. This is the Coleman Dual Fuel Camp Stove 424. Now, I've already actually sprayed this down with degreaser. And it's been soaking for about 15 to 20 minutes or so. And it's done a real nice job. Me and Bone was out here the other day. Uh, doing a pretty good sized little chicken and fish fry combo and uh, I noticed that of course grease is splattering everywhere and <laughs> Coleman stoves are notorious for one thing this baked on I call this baked on baked on uh, paint that they have well it's more or less that uh, you know that positive negative thing that they do to make the paint adhere yeah because once it starts to flake and peel, it's already gone. Now I'm just spraying it again. 
there's no reason for me to do that. And I'm, I'm spraying everything into the bottom, the eyes, and you're saying, don't do that, Mark. You're, you're stopping up your eyes, but don't worry. I know how to fix that. I sprayed the tank, the inside, the outside. Let's see. Now, this stove here was given to me by my nephew. And he has owned this thing for three years already. And it never has ever really been used. So, I've used it twice since I got it. And old Bones, a Bones Yard, he put a really good fry on this puppy. And I'm going to let this sit for about another 15-20 minutes. And I'm going to take it out there and hit it with a water hose. I want the cleaning process to be as simple as I possibly can. You may want to spray the underneath if you feel like you really have to. Now a lot of folks are probably going to cringe right now, but we need to get that degreaser off of there. The end of the water hose is cut off. We don't have pressure on that. I'm going to thoroughly rinse off that degreaser. And I got to sit here on top of my propane tank. Might as well wash down the propane tank while I'm at it there. Roger. And I'm hitting the burners, the eyes and everything. You think, well, man, man, you're getting water all in them tubes, man. Yep, I would be. But, hey. We're just going to rinse it all the way down. Let it thoroughly dry. If I turn it upside down, we're going to crank it back up on the water. I mean, the heat, rather. <laughs> heat it back up and let it do its thing. Now I've just removed the tank from the unit there and all I'm going to do is open up this valve. Stop it, ready. Okay, doggy. I'm going to let that fuel come out just a bit. You're going to see fuel shooting out. Don't panic, okay? Don't panic. That's not water, that's actual fuel. So now that I know that this tube here doesn't have water in it, that's important. I had to move the unit out here to the picnic table because they turned that air conditioner on. And now we remove the tank, we remove the grill grate. Now, if you look at this tube, this bottom part, if you can see that, the gas line comes to the hole here in the front of the unit, goes to the top of this here tube. This right here is your gas chamber tube, okay? This is also your aerator. This is a, you can't see it here, but on the bottom of it is a big kind of a square open that allows air to be sucked into it. Now, because we probably do have water in this tube, I know we have water here that has went to the bottom. So now, what I want to do, if you see how it's shaped, I'm going to close and lock the lid. I want to take the unit and stand it on its back end. That's to allow the water to get to the bottom of the tube, at least on this side. Now that I've given it about 10 minutes while a car goes by, we're going to take the unit and lay it on its top. And uh, while I got it up here, I'll show you some of the details about how the paint has worn on the bottom. These are little pre-made recessed or outcessed foots. This is the bottom of the unit and all four has the same thing. If I can get my camera to roll right. Yeah. So Coleman is known for having a very weak paint job. Very weak. And now after about another five minutes we're rolling up here on this side and I'm going to go ahead and flip it on over to save some time. And we're going to open this thing up. These are your wind guards. We can lock them into place. But before I put the grate back on, I need to see if this thing's going to even light. And it tells you here to lift this lever up for lighting. And let's just see what we got. Okay, we got the yellow. Now, I don't know if you can see that on the camera very well, but you get this burner down here where you can see it, camera rather, where you really can't see that. Well, I've got a fire here, but no fire here in the back. You can probably see the moisture. Maybe. 
that means there's water inside that wafer stack there. Don't worry, the fire is going to take care of it. Now lift the lever up in the up position here. And this burner here has been open, but it does not appear to be getting any gas through it. There we go, finally. I knew that once it heated up the tube that goes here, this is the carryover tube. This right here, this piece of brass, I think that's what they call a generator tube. Uh, that's what does the magic. And I tell you, out here, even at this time of day, it is almost impossible to see that flame when it gets blue. But this is burning. See if I can give you a little demonstration there. She's a burning fire. All right, I put the grate back in, and as I said before, I'm not really sure if that's true stainless steel, but I do know one thing. See that label right there? That's just one of those plastic stickers they stick on there on top of the paint. And I never understood this. You've got fire and heat. It's going to cause that thing to bubble and eventually melt or peel off. Now, Coleman, here's my suggestion. I mean, truly, it's just a suggestion. A lot of people like Coleman stoves. This metal that you have here, with this positive, negatively charged paint deal, this metal will rust very, very easily. Why don't you just make the whole unit out of stainless steel? I mean, it can't really cost that much more to produce, but it would definitely be worth it in the long run. But we love our Coleman stoves, and we want these things to last us pretty much a lifetime. And for some people, I guess they would if they don't ever use it but for us the people like to get out there and play with our stoves and cook on them when we're camping yeah we enjoy it y'all seen bone of bones yards uh <laughs> coma stove hadn't you yeah it's a real sight to behold now i'm really rushing the shooting in this here video this stove is still hot i just removed the grate again but right in here that degreaser did not remove what I thought was actual oil. Let me zoom in. If it stays in focus, we're good. Earlier, I took my thumbnail. This is like a little bubble raised from paint. And I took my thumbnail in this area, and yes, folks, it did. The oil reacted with the paint, and it caused the paint to fail. Let me see if I can do another one here. Yeah like the paint has turned to mush and it's not from the degreaser that's just from the oil sitting there in the stove being heated up during that cooking process <sighs> hmm. yep old dirt there from storage <laughs> I love the Coleman stoves here I just I've always admired them using through the years and folks this video is not how, about how to keep your Coleman stove in absolute pristine quality. If you use it, it's going to get dirty. There just ain't nothing you could do about it. The, it's, it's lightweight, it's portable, and I guess they say it's made for the outdoors when it's really not. If you take this thing and leave it out in the rain for a few weeks, even up to several months, you're going to see some damage happen to this thing you got to take care of your equipment that's more or less what this video is about is to how to try to keep the original paint on there as long as we possibly can now I could have used some soap and water but that meant a lot of scrubbing and if you're anything like me you ain't got time to sit there and give your stove a bath every time you use it so this was a quick and easy or easiest way that I know of to try to keep the stove to where it's not so gritty and grimy remember the paint on this thing and the materials that go into it is not exactly the so-called quality that you have there inside your house your inside house stove yeah it's a higher quality paint a lot more rugged this thing here is just not made like a house stove but when they work they work very very well so until next time 
This is amateur artist Mark D. Chandler once again from Man Land. Wishing you and y'all a very happy YouTube experience out there. And remember this. If you see that I may have done something wrong in this video, because I am an amateur after all, drop me a comment in the comment section below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the situation. Because as of yet, I have not seen a video on how to actually wash out your Coleman stove. <sighs> I guess it's going to be another first. How do you clean your Coleman stove? 